Hey, welcome to Woodwork for Humans. In our last couple of videos, we've been talking about the $30 workbench. And you really can build it for $30. And it's strong, and it's sturdy, and it is very not flat. And it needs to be flat. Or at least, flat-ish. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. I think people get way too bent out of shape about this. They think it needs to be like really exact, and it doesn't. It just needs a, like a Using the laminated construction for our bench top made it cheap and very sturdy. But pretty much no matter how you do it, it's probably going to come out fairly lumpy on top. And we're going to need to do something about that. It doesn't need to be perfect, but it does need to be pretty flat. Before you do any flattening, you need to assess your bench and see where the problems are. And you might think, oh, I need a bunch of straight edges and rulers, and I need a ruler like at least as long as the bench, and you don't really need any of that stuff. You can get a surprising amount done with just your eyeballs. So it's really easy to sight across the bench and to sight along it. And when I look down this bench, it is very obvious that it's high on either side, low in the middle, and probably a little bit twisted. And we can fix that stuff, no problem. In addition to your bare eyeballs, you might want a couple of things to make assessing the bench a little bit more easy or precise. For instance, fine woodworkers often use these things called winding sticks. They're just a pair of flat, straight, parallel hunks of hardwood that you can put at either end of a board, and they exaggerate defects like bow and twist. The set I'm using here I made myself out of sapele, but you don't need anything that fancy for this project. You've got a pile of offcuts from making the bench in the first place. Go over to that pile and hunt around until you find two straight and square pieces of 2x. Hold them up to the light with the edges together, and make sure no light is shining through. Flip them around every which way and double check that you've got no light gaps no matter how they're facing. You might need to do a tiny bit of planing, but I bet you can find two that'll get the job done straight out of the pile. I did. To use your winding sticks, set them up so they're centered on the bench and all the way at either end. And then, this part's a little tough to show on camera because it's hard to get both the sticks in focus at once, but what you want to do is sight over the top of your sticks and slowly move your head down until the tops of the sticks line up with one another. What you're looking for is for the far stick to disappear evenly over the horizon of this stick as you dip your head down. If the whole thing disappears at the same time, that means your bench is totally flat. This bench is very much not flat. So when I dip my head down and look over the tops of my sticks, the far end of that stick and the near end of this stick right here are both obviously higher. That corner disappears last. And that means my bench is twisted. It's high on this corner and high on that corner. And that's super obvious when I just look at the bench. There's a big hump in the boards right here. So these winding sticks just confirm what I can already see with my bare eyes. If the defects were a little bit more subtle, the sticks would exaggerate those defects and make them easier to see. So now that I know where all the problems are on this bench, I can get straight to work flattening it. I've got my number 404 that I converted into a scrub plane in our last video, and I'm just going to use that to take down the super high spots. I'm not going to go over the whole bench, I'm just going to do the things that I already know are problem areas. And what I'm doing here is going across the high spots with the scrub plane. This is called traversing the board, going across it sideways or at a diagonal. Because of the heavy camber on my scrub plane iron, I'm not going to get nearly as much tear out as you would expect, even though I'm going across the grain. I know that the middle of my bench is the low spot, and I'm trying to bring the edges down to the middle. So what I do is keep the heel of my plane towards the center of the bench, and that keeps it registered on the goal that I'm going towards. Then as I continue to plane and bring things down, when the plane starts to bite into the middle of the bench, I know I've taken off all the material that I need to, and I can stop. Now when I first glued this bench up, I was mostly concerned with getting the straightest glue joint possible, so I didn't pay a ton of attention to things like grain direction. As a result, when you're planing, you might get some bad tear out in some sections. You're probably going to have at least one or two boards that are heading in the total opposite direction from the other boards. When this happens, Flip your plane around and pull it towards you instead of pushing. That'll probably solve a lot of the tear-out issues. As you're working, you can use the side of your plane as a short straight edge. Put it on the part of the board that's low enough and lay it down across the high spot that you're working on, and you'll be able to tell if you've brought that high spot down enough. You can also grab any random scrap of wood with a straight edge, like one of your offcuts, and lay that across to see if you've got a nice flat end. I'm going to do the whole thing in stages. 
So once I've got the first 12 or so inches of the bench flattened, I'm going to move back, check where I am with the straight edge, and flatten another 12 inches or so. And progressing that way, I'm going to get the whole bench roughly flattened out. Now I've got the entire bench scrub planed, and just taking off the really bad high spots has left me with a surprisingly flat bench. It's pretty good the way it is. But I want to dial it in even more, and the surface has a fair bit of tear out. I'd like to take care of as much of that as I can. So, I've taken my 404 plane, taken out the scrub blade, and put back in the original iron that came with it, and it's set up to take sort of a medium cut. Now, instead of just working on the high spots of the bench, I want to work over the entire surface of the bench. I'm going to start by going from one end of the bench to the other, at a 45 degree angle, covering the entire bench from side to side, and going from one end all the way to the other. That's going to give me a relatively flat and clean surface. But, especially because I'm using a short plane like this, there could be errors, low spots, high spots, stuff like that. So then, I'm going to do the exact same thing in the opposite direction. I'm going to go from the opposite side and the opposite end, also at a 45 degree angle. And going at it from two angles like that should cancel out any errors and leave me with a very clean final surface. I want to make absolutely sure that I'm doing the whole bench, so I'm going to crosshatch the entire thing with a pencil. And with most traditional woodwork, I would stand next to the work while I planed it, but I'm still going to have to sit on the bench. So this part of the process almost requires me to pull the plane. It's really not a big deal. These metal planes pull just fine. Now that I've smooth planed the bench in both directions, it's actually really flat, and the surface is good too. There's still some localized spots of tear out, but this is a workbench. I honestly don't care. Now, I'm really glad I put the pencil marks all over the bench, because I can still see those marks here and there, and throughout most of the bench, there are little localized areas that don't really mean anything, and I don't care. But when I get down to this end of the bench that I'm sitting on right now, I have no pencil marks along either side, and very clear pencil marks all through the middle of the bench. And that tells me, unambiguously, that this bench is still high on either side and low in the middle. Now, in a way, that's good news, because I plan on doing most of my planing over at the other side of the bench, where I made that mortise for putting in the planing stop. That's the part of the bench I really need to be flat. This end of the bench is going to be more about chopping mortises, sawing tenons, stock breakdowns, stuff like that. It doesn't need to be perfectly flat. I could leave it alone. If I didn't have obsessive compulsive problems. I, I really need to flatten this. Now, just as a demonstration, this is a great time to own a long plane. Like, I'm going to grab this old wooden jointer, and I'm going to shoot down both sides of the bench. And long planes like this are really awesome, because they skip over all the little low spots and valleys, and just nip the tops off any of the high spots in the wood. They're perfect for leveling large surfaces. It's why they exist. Now, I know you're thinking, oh, Rex, very nice. You have that nice old jointer that just gets the job done for you. Well, what about the rest of us schlubs out in the world trying to get some woodwork done? What about us? Don't worry. I'm on it. Think there's a way to make a longish plane that's not going to cost a ton of money. Give me a week or two. But more importantly, if you have to run this operation and just do it with your short little 404, it's not that big of a deal. Just go straight along the boards and take off material until they're even with that center section. And go ahead and plane off those pencil marks too. Once I'm done and I'm really happy with the surface that I have, I'm going to go ahead and block sand the entire thing. Now, you can do this by hand like I'm doing here, or if you own a power sander, go ahead and use it. This is woodworking for humans, not woodworking for masochists. There's no reason we shouldn't plug something into the wall if we've got it. Once the entire bench is sanded, I'm going to make a finish out of one half spar urethane and one half mineral spirits. And I'm going to paint that over the whole bench. I wouldn't even call this finishing, I'm really just going to slather it on. One coat a day for three days, giving the bench a lot of time to soak up that finish in between. Now right now, a lot of people are wringing their hands and saying, Oh my god, you don't put polyurethane on a workbench! I know. Relax. Here's the thing. This bench is made out of softwood. It's quite soft. You can dent it with your fingernail. And I expect this bench to live a hard life. I'm going to take it outside this summer, hopefully get into some chair making and some green woodworking. And this bench is going to be outside. It's going to get moved around. It is going to get the snot kicked out of it. It really needs all the help that it can get. The thing about spar urethane is that it's a little bit waterproof and it's somewhat UV resistant. Now, I'm watering it down with the mineral spirits because I want it to soak in as much as possible. That way it's going to stiffen all the fibers of the wood and make the surface harder and tougher. It shouldn't form a film on the wood because I've got it thinned out so much, so it's not going to be slippery and send my work pieces skittering all over the place. And even if it did that, 
I could just stand at the surface a little bit and I'd get that grip back again. So this is just some preventative maintenance to give this bench as long a life as it can possibly get. This was a big enough project that I don't feel like doing it again anytime soon. Before I go, let me just say that I love making Woodwork for Humans videos. People are responding to them really well, and I know that because my numbers are way up. Way more people are watching these videos. My subscriber count is way up. I'm just doing great at the moment. And I still want to do better. So if you're enjoying these videos, there's just one thing you can do that would really help me out. Share them on social media, especially places like Facebook and Reddit, where I really don't have much of a presence. If you're on those platforms, slap one of those videos up there. Say a nice thing or two about them. It's going to make it so much easier for new people to find these videos and for this series to keep growing. I'd honestly like to do more of these, maybe even two videos a week. If the videos are getting a good response and I'm making enough money, I can make that happen. And you can help with it. It's the only thing I need. Oh, and of course, I always like to remind everybody that these videos are made possible by my patrons on Patreon. Without their generous support, I wouldn't be able to make any of these videos, let alone more of them. So thank you guys so much. And for everybody who's watching, thanks for watching.